joining us, and I'm going to call us to order at 3.03. Welcome, everybody. Um, I know Lyle wanted to add an executive session, and I think, is it on a contract? Yes. Okay. And then I think I've got maybe two others also around contracts. So I think at the end of this, we're gonna bounce in and out of executive sessions. <laughs> um, otherwise, let's get to the approval of minutes. So remember, we only meet four to five times a year. So we need <laughs> to approve eight sets of minutes <laughs> between March 17th and March 31st. So we've got March 17th, 18th, March 20th, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, and March 31st. Could I have a motion to approve? So moved. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second. Um, any oh. questions, comments? Thank you. Sorry. Oh, I gotta let Andy in. Hold on, I'm letting Andy in. There we go. <laughs> gotta remember to look at that area. All right, so if everybody is good, let I would, all those in favor of approving the eight sets of minutes from March, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? All right, seeing none, minutes are approved. Would someone like to move the warrants? We have March 3rd, in the amount of $321,412.27, March 18th, in the amount of $319,572, I'm sorry, $319,572.94, April 1st, warrants in the amount of $452,500.21, April 15 warrants in the amount of $349,155.15, and payrolls um, of February 28th, March 13th, March 27th, and April 10th. Would someone like to move those? So moved. David, is there a second? Second. Um, any questions or comments? I know, David, you had sent some questions. Have we gotten answers? Uh, I, I think um, I haven't gotten answers from Frank, but they weren't. Um, they aren't anything that would obstruct the voting. They were more informational than anything else. Okay, so you're comfortable moving ahead and... Yeah, I think I, think I got the answers to the SD warrants, but I, I'm not sure, and I haven't looked carefully today to see if I got um, have answers today, but it, okay. they're not, not questions that should... You're all right. Me. Yeah. Did anyone else have questions? And feel free, once you get the warrants, if you do have any, Send it to Frank, CC me, and then I'll keep track of if people have got concerns and we can keep following up. But otherwise, all those in favor of passing the warrants and payroll as stated, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, hearing none, that is done. Um, next up is new business. So Lyle, I'm taking this as you. Unmute myself. Um, I assume that's the resignations and the re rescinding. Yes. yes. I, I'm having a hard time toggling back and forth between <laughs> being here and looking at the agenda. So, <laughs> so we have had some um, resignations. Um, each of these people is uh, either taking a new job or moving totally out of the area. So uh, Junie Pereira is a special educator at BAMS. He's taken the job as the head of education at Community House. Um, Gabrielle Polito is another special educator at BAMS. She actually is moving back to Pennsylvania and has taken a job um, in, um, at Penn State University. Um, in the athletic department, um, she has a background of working um, as 
I'm not sure if it's an athletic trainer, but in athletic. So she's moving back there. And Alexa Schultz, I hate the fact that we're losing, Alec I hate the fact we're losing anybody, but Alexa Schultz is a school psychologist. Uh, she started dating Soren Pelswalsh a few years ago, who also is now, he joined the army and he's now stationed in Washington. And so she's moving to uh, join him where he is. So I would ask that you accept with regret their resignations. Would someone like to make that motion? So moved. Is there a second? Yes. Oh, I see. I saw Michelle's hand okay. first. <laughs> Michelle gets it. Um, okay. Any comments, questions? I'm assuming we're refilling all of these. These are all. Um, I would not make that assumption. Okay. 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 Good to know. Um, all right, all those in favor of accepting the three resignations with regrets, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Hearing none, it is unanimous. All right, and then we've got a rescind leave request. Right, so a special educator had um, asked to take a year's leave of absence to do some uh, work um, actually with a nonprofit on climate change. Um, she is now asking to rescind that letter. Uh, she feels like when students do return in the fall that it's going to be more important than ever for them to have somebody that they are familiar with as a teacher um, after all this time. And uh, talking with the principal and the special ed director, they are very, very happy that she's asking to have that rescinded. Um, she may come back in another year asking for that, but for now, she feels like it um, educationally for the students that her students that this would not be the best time for her to be taking a leave of absence. And so, who was that, Lyle? Um, we, I know we approved this leave uh, a while ago. Uh, yeah, it's Lisa Moransky. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have to do the the, the notes. Well. Can I just make a comment that um, I appreciate that the um, this request was already approved and it sounds like maybe she was on track to do this um, exciting project. Um, and so I appreciate the fact that she has put the, the, her own sort of needs and adventures aside in order to um, accommodate what she anticipates um, will be the students' needs. I second that. Yeah. So I'm going to take that as a motion from Kelly and a second from Anne. <laughs> sure. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor of approving the rescinding of a leave request, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. Moving on to the SU Continuous Improvement Plan. Great. That's like why it. Paul's here. Yay! <laughs> so um, I'm wondering how we want to do it. I can share my screen to go through the document quickly. Uh, you have should all have it. I can simply refer to page numbers, whatever is most convenient for you. Sometimes it's nice to see everybody and look at the document separately. How how would you like to proceed? Paul, I don't I don't have it. Yeah. I so I just yeah. noticed today when I went in to get the zoom number because i couldn't find it in my computer it's on the website so my first question was going to be do we have to take action on this tonight no i don't i well. okay so we could have you walk us through it sure we could then all read it in our own time and then come back in a month and approve it is there a deadline for this no there isn't, uh, and it's um, my apologies. I probably some cross communication about getting it, getting it out to you. So, um, yeah, that's fine. That works okay. fine. So yeah, I mean, do you want to share your screen and sort of walk us through sure. just the highlights? Sure, Can you also just give us kind of the background? Why? Yeah, I was going to do that anyway. Um, let me do that first. Okay. Uh, okay. For as long as I've been in the district, there has been a, some process of broadly speaking, strategic planning. Sometimes it's called an action plan. 
sometimes you know, for a while it was being called the Green Mountain Star Plan um, and it's currently being called the uh, Continuous Improvement Plan. And the plan formats change over time and the drivers change over time. Right now, this particular plan is more about, um, is grounded in some of the improvement theory um, that's come out recently. Um, and so, but ba on its base, it's a, it's a, what are the things that we think are going to be really important going into the next year? Um, and what are some uh, smart goals, specific, uh, measurable, achievable, uh, relevant, and time-bound. What are those smart goals that we can identify that we want to um, use to, to, to drive some of the work that we do in the, in, in the next year? Uh, and the smart goal idea has been around for quite a while, even in the older action plans. That was sort of how, how we based them. Uh, broadly speaking, the notion is to look at the data that you have for your uh, district, compare that to where you want to be, say, in terms of a vision statement, and then if you aren't there, um, try and identify what are the things that are keeping you from being there, and then what are the actions you can take uh, in the near term that will get you to where you want to be. And so that's sort of how this particular document is, is laid out. It's a plan for uh, work that we think is particularly important um, and we really want to highlight going into next year. I will say that this plan was largely written prior to uh, the pandemic and um, doesn't have a specific reference to the pandemic, but I think in the presentation you'll see where the relevance uh, comes up, okay? Any questions before we jump into the document itself? Uh, I think I can see everybody on the screen. So, all right, so I'm gonna share my screen and go and see if I can find out where it is. Um, I think, oh gosh, where is it? There it is. <laughs> um, should be there. Might be on a different, uh, is it? No, not there. Hang on. Um, there we go. Are you seeing it? Because I, I am not. I saw it for a split second. Okay, hang on. Let me get to, uh, there it is. All right, how is that? Everybody see that okay? Yes. All right. Uh, I see the agenda. Oh, um, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go to, um, uh, part of the problem is I'm using two screens. I'm going to go to a single screen. Okay. And hopefully that. But, you know. I see the plan. Huh. You do? Maybe I it's do me because I have the agenda up on my. <laughs> um, let me stop sharing and share again. That's all right, Paul. Why don't you go, if everybody else can see it, I can go find it and put it up on my screen because I know exactly where it is. Okay. Can you tell us where we would be able to find this on there? Um, find if, the. If you on go the, to the SU website. And look under the SU. So go to school boards. You'll see yep. the SU. And I think it was under our agenda. Okay. So All right. Thank you. So um, the AOE gave us a template to work from. And this is, uh, it's got the watermark draft because it uh, hasn't been approved yet. Um, and as I said, there's a, there's a number of support documents and, and sort of guidelines, the uh, uh, improvement science uh, documents that go along with this. But the body of the report is essentially this first page is um, well, talks about, yes. I'm, I'm seeing your folder structure right now. I don't know if that's yes. somebody else. Yes. Okay, let me see, I you're think, seeing. I think the document is over to the right. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me try one more time. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I have that document up and then I'm going to share my screen. And it should be this screen. Oh yeah, I see, I, that's what I did, okay. Oh, looks good yeah. to me. Yep, that's it. Okay, all right, I had, been, I had been looking at one screen and sharing another screen. So this is, um, the first page is, is simply talking about who was in on the creation of the 
uh, of the continuous improvement plan. Um, note that I've got anticipated uh, the feedback that I get from you folks. Um, and I do have uh, some, um, I'm gathering some information from community members, uh, parents um, on a sort of a separate thread and those names will, will go in there. Um, the next piece on that page is just, uh, is not just, but is our uh, SU level vision. WSCSU schools will be safe, inclusive, and supportive environments where all students grow academically, socially, and emotionally are challenged to reach their potential as local and global community members. That has been our vision statement for some time. That's the SU level vision statement. Uh, school level vision statements are similar, but crafted uniquely to, to each school um, in, the, in the district. Um, and one of the questions on the action plan is, well, so you've got this great vision, how do you um, monitor it? And really, I think for us, the, the main uh, vehicle for monitoring our achievement of the vision is the monthly uh, supervisory union level leadership team meetings where we're sort of the actions that were taken are framed against that, that vision statement. Um, and I feel free to jump in at any time. I'll, maybe I'll stop at the end of each page uh, to make sure that there are, uh, I can answer any questions. Page two is broad academic uh, focus areas and problems of practice. Um, the broad academic fo areas of the focus um, comes out of uh, a data inventory where we look at things like uh, large scale statewide assessment data, um, local screening and progress monitoring data, uh, student uh, climate surveys, parent uh, satisfactions, climate surveys. Um, we've done uh, analysis of suspension data. There, there's sort of a, a bunch of different ways that we, we look at it. And um, in that data collection, for us, two themes really, really sort of came out very clearly. Um, historically, or we, we, yeah, I'll say that historically, we don't do as good a job as we should in serving what are called historically underserved groups. And um, the state in their accountability system um, puts all students in those various categories, that is students of color, low uh, socioeconomic status students, students on IEPs, um, migrant students, homeless students in, in one pot and compares that to the whole student group, or sorry, students not in that pot, and looks at the achievement of each of those groups. And if there's a gap, um, then that, that is of concern. And for us, and I will say for the state and for the country generally, there is a, historically, there is a gap between performance of uh, low-income students, low-income as measured by free and reduced lunch el eligibility, and students not eligible for free and reduced lunch. Um, the size of that gap varies. For us, it's on the order of between 20 and 30 percent. That is to say, 20 and 30 percentage points. Uh, and we can look at that a, a bunch of different ways. But essentially, there is that gap in performance. And that's what that first broad area of academic focus is. We, are, we need to address that gap in performance. The second, and, and I would say not independent at all, cl clearly related in terms of student performance overall, um, is, is, a, is a goal about safe and healthy schools. And I think you as board members will have heard on any number of occasions concerns expressed about the level of student behavior um, causing disruptions in classrooms and uh, in some cases preventing learning. And um, as we dig into our understanding of uh, the ways that trauma impacts students, uh, as we look at the um, financial stresses that create um, huge pressures on families and end up uh, potentially uh, coming out in, in um, dysregulated student behavior, uh, that seems to be an area that, that um, we've got evidence is, is having an impact on, on learning and we want to address that. And so from those two broad areas of focus, we, I, we can sort of articulate it at the bottom of that second page as two problems of practice. There's a gap in achievement for students in historically underserved populations, 
and student misbehavior is having negative impact on student learning. To sort of frame it as a, here's what we see the problem is. Any questions on that? Okay, uh, and feel free to jump in. The next um, page, page three, is the geek stuff. This is the improvement science. And the notion is, well, if you have a problem, uh, can you articulate why you have that problem? And there's a number of different ways to do it. There's a, what's called a fishbone diagram, and we tend not to go that way. We like the five whys protocol. And essentially, if you can name the problem and then ask the question why, and come up with an answer, then you can again ask the question why and, and literally dig down. And I think it's these, the text here is probably way too small, so I'm gonna pump this way up. So you have a sense of what we're talking about. Let's see if I can, oops, can I move this over? I think I can, yeah, okay. So, um, for instance, for the achievement gap, the low SES student group does not, we sort of articulate that problem, is not scoring at the same level as higher SES student group on large scale, scale assessments. Why do we think that is? Um, one way to state that is, well, as far as we can determine, low SES students are not as well prepared academically. That is to say, there aren't other factors that are preventing, you know, students are, you know, academically prepared, but there's something else that's preventing their, um, uh, their achievement. Uh, we sort of have the, the, the notion that, as far as we know, it, there, there's, there's some lack of preparation. So why would that be? Um, potentially, the students being low, low SES students, uh, and broadly speaking, this is not speaking about any individual student at all, but broadly speaking, the group of students not benefiting as much from instruction. Well, why would that be? And we can think of some different ways why that might be. Um, is the instruction lessons, are lessons not differentiated sufficiently for the range of students served? It, are intervention resources needed to support these students uh, that, that are uh, the, the, the intervention resources provided are not matching the needs uh, or potentially um, there isn't the same home supports for learning and therefore students are, are struggling more in school because of that lack of support. And we can identify some possible whys there. And as always, there are things we can do, uh, we can take action on and things we can't take action on. So in many ways, uh, we wanna go to um, looking at these two, teach resource and teacher knowledge of effective differentiation and intervention, matching intervention resources to students. Are those, those are actions we, at, we have control of, we can, we can do more in that area. We can't necessarily do more in the area of um, uh, few, say fewer ac economic resources for students. However, even with uh, with the home, looking at home situations, we can certainly do more in the in the area of uh, of engagement, uh, family parent and family engagement, to perhaps perhaps supply supply additional supports for for family learning. Similarly, um, if we can do a similar protocol, and I won't read all of these for dysregulated student behaviors negatively impacting instruction. This one's a little more complicated because we can answer the why question in, in some, some different ways. Uh, that should be many students, I'll have to edit that. Um, do not have the tools needed to uh, uh, appropriately handle strong feelings, particularly feelings that arise from past trauma. Um, perhaps our behavior management system is not uh, uh, sufficiently coordinated across the district and based on um, some real common understandings. And so we're not quite getting our instruction with respect to what's reasonable behavior. How do we, you know, what are some ways you can regulate your feelings? What supports do you need in order to do that? Um, so those are areas that we uh, potentially could work on. Um, and we, w that gets articulated in the long run as really we don't have at this point a real unified vision for and commitment to social emotional academic development um, and that's a sort of a very broad category broad term for um, engaging students teaching appropriate behaviors um, providing supports having uh, for particularly dysregulated students having plans um, behavior plans in place that are uh, 
commonly understood followed um, procedures are followed so that these students can can get the supports that they need. And I'm going to pause for a second because I'm sure there are questions there. And apologies for how small it is in the in the document. I was I was just trying to fit it in. Otherwise, the thing would have got really large. I have these these diagrams um, uh, saved separately. If anybody wants a wants a sort of a bigger version of that. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. Practicing wait time. Okay. So next page. Uh, next couple of pages. Um, again, this is the geek stuff about um, Im Im improvement science. The next stage would be to say, well, if you can identify what are some root causes, um, what do you think is going to make a difference? And can you state that as a, a sort of a, a theory of improvement, right? So uh, our theory of improvement for the addressing the uh, achievement gap is if we provide teachers with additional professional development, coaching, support for more effective classroom management and differentiation, regularly disaggregate student performance data, implement SU-wide uh, social emotional academic development programming, then the gap in achievement between lower SES and high SES students will decrease. And again, I'll, I'll, this is a, what's called a driver diagram. And I'll actually read it from, it's, the arrows go from right to left. I'll read it from left to right because it's sort of a, a backward planning document. So if the problem of practice is low SES student group is underperforming in large scale assessment, we can say, well, what specifically would we like to see as a change? By June 21, that's the time bound piece. The achievement gap uh, will be reduced by 5%. That's the measurable goal uh, in each of the large scale assessment categories. So it's specific, measurable. Uh, we believe it's achievable, although it was pointed out in some feedback that I got that even 5% may be be a stretch given that uh, given the impact of the closure on student learning this year um, and yeah that 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 may be a, a valid point by the way we are not going to get large-scale uh, statewide assessment this year that um, the SBACs this year have been canceled so we don't have that we won't have access to those data we do have uh, access to spring 19 data and then so what are the things that would drive this goal um, you know, sort of directly, we can identify curriculum, instruction, and assessment, the big three in a classroom, and also school climate, that all have an impact on whether or not we achieve this goal. And then, well, what are the things, what are the, the, the sort of the secondary drivers that, that will support that? Aligned instruction, engaging curriculum, effective interventions, differentiation, all of those things that lead to really excellent um, core instruction um, and things that lead to uh, a positive school climate. And then going further back, what are the specific things that we can do? What are the change ideas that will support these? So a change idea would be provide additional professional development and coaching to support more effective classroom management and differentiation. Regularly disaggregate student data, uh, student assessment data. Identify and implement non-negotiable elements of an SU-wide um, uh, socio uh, sorry, uh, social emotional academic uh, development program. And then finally, what are the things that we can measure that'll tell us whether we're doing these change ideas? Sorry, that was a, a whole lot of talking on my part. I'll pause and listen for questions. Okay. Uh, let me Take it back down again. There is a similar dryer di driver diagram, again, won't go over it, for um, the uh, SEAD, the Social Emotional Academic Development uh, piece. And the, the, the short version is we really want to up our game in terms of social emotional academic development. And although, as I said, although there are not, um, it's not specifically mentioned, the notion of um, focusing on improving and making even more excellent our core instruction and focusing our attention on student and family engagement, building school uh, classroom communities, school communities. Um, those are areas that will be even more important going into next school year. There is a lot of um, catch up 
to do in terms of school climate, um, student engagement, um, uh, instruction that we'll need to do. And, and it feels to me at least that these, focusing on these two goals will, will be kind of the, the important pieces going into the next year. And I'll pause for just a second. Let me take this down a little bit more. And then the rest is um, simply identifying, well, if here's the goal, here's what we want to do. Uh, here are the changes. We're just sort of putting into text what you just saw in those di driver diagrams. That's for the uh, SES, the gap goal, and this is for the SEAD goal. And then the last piece is a, um, here's what we had in prior years, sort of interesting, we're, this is something that doesn't get done in a year. We've been working on this and, for a while and it's even more important now. And some change ideas, uh, measures that were in place and the results that we have um, uh, uh, provided, uh, sort of the results that we've got so far. We've made some improvements, there's no question about that, um, but we certainly have, have more more ground to cover, I would put it that way. And there are, there's a subsequent section to this that's a, the next sort of level of um, improvement science, which has to do with uh, plan, do, plan, study, do, act. No, plan, act, study, do, um, a, a cycle of, of sort of uh, almost like action research, that is to say, um, putting in, in, into motion some changes, examining how the, the impact of those changes on sort of a short term, making adjustments, looking again, and then at the end of the year, uh, kind of doing a summary, did these actions have, have an impact? And we will sort of, we'll move into that, um, that realm at this time next year. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Sorry, that was a whole lot of talking, I apologize. Oh, that was good. Thank you. Does anyone have questions? Yeah, I have a, a couple of really broad ones. But just first an observation, I'm really, um, this is the first time anybody's in 12 years on school board, the first time anybody's taken me through the action planning. And I know it changed over the years, but this format has been in place for quite a while now. And um, I'm really, it's really helpful to have it explained. And uh, you described it as the, the, um, I can't remember how you, the, the data nerd details or something, but you know the format is 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 a, a model or a structure, but the information, the content is 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 really the meaning of it, and um, it's really it's really helpful to see how how we're approaching that. The um, the two questions, the I guess the only question I have at this point, because I want to go through and really write a lot of things on it, this document that I didn't want to try and address now, I haven't had really time to think about it. And, and um, but specifically, um, how much, how involved are our staff in, in creating this plan? The SU level plan, not as much. Um, it's really, that's really conversations with the leadership team, but each of the schools has to produce their own um, continuous improvement plan. And that's really where the, the staff get involved. Okay, and our, uh, is that true of family members, parents, and community members as well? Yes, the expectation is that um, parents, uh, community, students, and um, teachers will all be part of the um, part of the process. It's uh, I'll say we could definitely do a better job of um, of doing that. I my particular sense is that the leadership councils are a place that, that now that that structure is in place uh, is a great sounding board for the um, continuous improvement plans. Yeah, um, that's, that's my thought as, as well. Uh, we'll just have to be really, really clear and direct about um, that as an expectation for their work and, and actually have them be looking at these things too. Yep. Like, I can see in the approach is really, it makes sense for schools to, to look at the academics and the things they can handle in the classroom, but we all know very well, not just because of, of this pandemic, but we all know that, that what happens at home is, uh, and what's happened before the kids even get to school is also really crucial. So, and it's always a question, how much do we involve ourselves in that? But um, that's for the next, next conversation. Thank you.
Anybody else? Other questions? Up, oh, Sean. I see your yeah, hand. I, I was. Uh, I, I just attended a, a Guilford Leadership Council at uh, one o'clock today, and a lot of these uh, items they don't they don't necessarily do with the bullet points and everything, but a lot of the issues are definitely up front and center in front of our principal and all our leadership council because there are a lot of staff members on the leadership council plus the former board members so a lot of these things that you just highlighted are definitely not in that format necessarily but they're they're definitely aware of them and they're definitely things that they work towards uh, very very consciously so that's really heartening to see um, I, I I was also going to, my first question was going to be similar to what David brought up, and that is, how do you integrate something like this, which has a little bit of the geek in it, like you said, how you make that palatable to, um, you know, the carpenters such as myself. Um, so, you know, and people that like to cut firewood in, in the woods. And, and so how, how do you, what, how do you bridge that? Um, how do you bridge that gap? I think you've given the answer. The, the, I know that Guilford, I've uh, spoken with John, John and I have gone back and forth quite a bit recently on the Guilford uh, Continuous Improvement Plan. I'm guessing what you got in, in some cases was the, the sort of the essence of the plan without all of the um, foo -foo of the of the format of the document. Yeah. Um, I truly, I don't know how many people are gonna be really keen about driver diagrams. They totally float my boat, but it's golly. We're gonna so find out. You, <laughs> so, so if you don't, if you don't um, include that piece, but you talk about, golly, what is the problem here? What do we, you know, what do we think is going on, and what can we do about it? That's the essence, and if that's the discussion that's happening, um, and and you create a plan and you provide it for feedback, and somebody says, well, I don't get this driver diagram, but I sure as heck get what's the problem what can we do about it yeah, I, then i think you're okay yeah does that answer your question and i would compare uh, an analogy would be all the environmental laws that are in place in the state of vermont does anybody look in those drawers and look at the specific environmental law no but do people know that they can take a skitter across the stream yes do they know why yes so even the, the, so the document exists the document validates what is important but it doesn't necessarily have to be shoved in the face of somebody who can't understand it sorry are there questions from board members michelle or kelly or ann all right i've got just a couple strange ones um so the time frame of this, is this sort of a school year or is this a July 1st to June 30th? The, the intention is July 1 okay. uh, for the plan. Um, the plan originally um, had to be, it was, it's now tied to our Consolidated Federal Programs Grant or was until we couldn't, you know, meet in person anymore and the, the those deadlines got, got fuzzed a little bit but in general it's uh the timing is supposed to be related to the application that we send up to the state for title one title two a title four money which in a lot of ways drives um the the, the work that we're doing the title one money that we get from the state goes to um academic support positions uh in in this in, in the schools and in the title one schools and so um, the timing is more about uh, uh, the, the scope of the, of the plan is next year, is FY21. Mm -hmm. The timing is, in normal years, is really about making sure the funding is in place to implement the plan that you've got in mind. Okay. Um, how often do you guys review this? How often do you look at it and say, we're on track, we're not on track? Uh, reviewing the document itself, not very often. Um, reviewing the notions that the, I mean, the number of times we have spoken about um, dysregulated behavior mm -hmm. in, in the leadership, that's pretty much every 
every, every, every month. Every month, that, yeah. The, 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 when we talk about the achievement gap, that's, that's part of the discussion on a regular basis, but reviewing the plan, not so much. And there's also, there's this added piece of um, every principal ha with, ha has essentially two plans to review, um, their own school plan and the SUY plan. Really, what we try and do is keep the SUY plan at a, at a kind of a higher level um, and let the schools develop the plan, their school plan, almost out of that, but with more specifics. And, and they're paying more attention to the specifics um, in, their, in, their, in their local plan. Okay, so yep. we start with the SU plan and yes. then the schools kind of draw down on right. it. Say, okay, these are the goals. But here's how it impacts me, because each yes. site yes. might have a different approach to, Absolutely. Or, or they might have a different level of a problem. Some schools might mm -hmm. want to focus more on one side of it than the other based on what yeah. they've got. Correct. Yes. Okay. So, and that's been the way it's actually for years with action plan. We've always had the SU and then schools okay. build off that depending upon what their specific um, need is. Um, for instance, this year, we have spent time at every single leadership meeting really talking about social, emotional, academic learning, knowing that that would be our focus um, for the year. And uh, we have a group of people with Greg, uh, Greg Stoller looking, working with the counselors, um, looking at different uh, social, emotional um, assessments or screeners, I should say, not assessments. Um, so that has been in that uh, last year's plan, and we need to continue to work on that. So that's just one example of, you know, every single month, even though we don't put that plan up on the screen for everybody to see, everybody knows this is the focus. This is what we're working on, and, that, and we're doing some sort of work around that. So I think one of my final questions, um, how do we do last or how are we doing now? And when do we get a report on here's what we want? Here were our measurable goals for last year. Here's what we hit. Here's what we didn't hit. Here's what we found. Here's lessons learned. This year, we don't get that at all because our SMART goals were tied, ultimately tied to um, yes, performance on large scale assessment. Now, uh, let me, oh, well, yeah. And the other piece was we, we invest a lot in our student climate surveys and closure happened just <laughs> as we were about to, to implement those, those okay. surveys. So we're kind of a little blind this year. Okay. Um, in general, uh, I, I guess I would characterize it as, as a district, we perform well with respect to other districts in, in the, the state. Um, but we still, as other districts do, we still have an achievement gap and um, where the sample size is sufficiently large, we have an IEP student achievement gap that's particularly large. Uh, and historically, that has been the toughest nut, those two have been the, the toughest nuts to crack. Um, we can I think I would say that we have been successful in pockets, but we haven't ever really managed to spread it out to the whole district. We're kind of still putting out fires, as it were, mm -hmm. rather than, than having a real um, district-wide, concerted, you know, clear front moving forward, I guess is how I, would, how I would describe it. It's really hard. I don't, I, I, I you know, even nationally, you you hear about the what they used to be called 90, 90, 90 schools, 90% uh, poverty, 90% students of color, 90% proficient. And those were encouraging stories and informative stories, but they were isolated pockets. They weren't sort of universal um, solutions. So it's it's a problem we're still working on. All right, I think my final question, I promise. Um, if you were to start writing this plan today, would it be vastly different than what you brought or would it just be tweaked a little based on our circumstances? Um, I think the tweak would be to 
specify remote learning, distance learn, uh, distant, uh, social distancing. Okay. Um, and, and, but, but I would also say that the, the social emotional um, learning, the en classroom engagement, creating uh, positive climates is more, more important um, I, I would, I would almost, if I re rewrote it, I'd almost put the, the social emotional ahead of the academic, um, in, in terms of, of our focus going into next year as a result of the, the impact of the closure. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, Michelle. Yeah. I'm just for my own clarification again. Um, so the, the measures for um, success or achievement are, are basically testing scores and a climate survey. Are there? Or if you, sure, if you look at the, um, let me go there, um, the specific SMART goals in the CIP for the coming year are, um, golly, where are they? I just had them. Um, I was looking. I was trying to see if I could yeah, find it. Okay, sorry. It's down in the text. Um, uh, SMART goal. By June 2021, achievement gap for low SES students will be reduced by 5% for each large-scale assessment. So that's the um, SBAC ELA, SBAC Math, and Vermont Science Assessment. Okay. Right? And for uh, goal two, reports of significant class time interrupted by behavior issues will decrease by 5%. Um, so it, that got framed in terms of a, a broader um, reports on uh, significant class disruption, um, but it's kind of grounded in um, the uh, behavior data for, for, for a given school. Okay. And I, I guess I think of the, the student climate survey data. Yeah, I think a number of schools are adding the student climate survey data um, as in, in their individual their um school-based um continuous improvement plans yeah thanks other questions either kelly or ann oh i see sean sean um i would just wonder you had referred to uh this continuous improvement plan will go to the state for validation that we're following certain mandates is that correct um and their mandates are tied to things that are set by the aoe that have to be accomplished in order to achieve um financial stability uh, all those types of things or uh, it, it's, it's this in this case it's more about the regulations in the the reauthorization of the no child left behind act it's the essa um, there's a the, the there is an accountability system. It's not the same as what was in the No Child Left Behind, but there is an accountability system that the state had uh, a large hand in creating. They had to get it approved by the feds. But um, that state plan um, has some requirements. One of the things that's true for us in terms of accountability is we do have some schools and the district identified for. Un, you know, not for the gap in underserved, underserved populations. So there's a requirement that we have to address that in the continuous improvement plan as we've done. And they're going to look for that when we send the, the uh, continuous improvement plan in, into them to be reviewed. So it's, it's more about um, meeting the ed quality standards and the associated um, Every Student Succeeds Act uh, requirements that that lead to what, what needs to be in the in the CIP. Anybody else have a question? Yep, I do. Oh, David, did go you ahead. stay? Ann was Ann waiting? Um, I don't oh, think oh, I wasn't waiting. I Paul has actually made this presentation to me in Putney before. Oh, nice. so going into it, I understood what he was talking about. Good. Great. Yeah, well, Glad somebody question, did. Yeah. Uh, my question, actually, it's, um, well, I, I um, you know, clearly this is really, as you said, Paul, this is really hard work. And um, the results that we're getting are, they reflect the national results. 
and I, I think it's probably fair to say that nobody's doing a better job at trying to um, improve the performance, the, the achievement of, of the, those the particular students that, that this plan addresses. Um, I think that, well, I guess, I don't, I'm, my question was gonna be, have we ever met the 5%, but it's a rhetorical question because I've been watching these results for, year, for over a decade now, and I know we haven't. And if we had met it three or four times in a row, we wouldn't have the gap. And I think it, it kind of, I think it needs to be said, and that, that focusing on, on standards as we've done for, I mean, No Child Left Behind was 2001, so you know, for 20 years. And actually Vermont had uh, standards uh, in place in, in the late 90s. And uh, but fo focusing on standards and now proficiencies and using uh, national tests to assess them and to guide our efforts, I think, it, I, I think we have to admit that it's not working. And I think that that's, and that's not a criticism of anybody in our system or really anywhere. It's just, it's, I think it's a criticism of um, not looking quickly enough at, the, at the, your work, I should say, over the last uh, year or so with a larger focus on socio, social emotional um, interventions. And also um, letting things happen like if a, if a teacher's got a group of kids that just won't settle in, they have permission to take those kids outside for a while. They have permission to intervene in other ways. And I, I think those are the kinds of things, those things and also having a lot more community engagement and defining, and defining those um, steps in the driver, the driver diagram, the driver diagram um, are the kinds of things that we're gonna need to do a lot more of if we, if we ever wanna have any effect. And um, you know, I just I, I I don't think it's great to present it and, and to to say you know we're doing as well or better than, than other people in the state, but we're still not it's, we're not still not getting there. It's not working. I I agree. I would say I feel like I've seen evidence of the gap narrowing significantly in particular schools over a period of a few years. Yes. Um, we have had that kind of success and it's elusive um but it's but to me the message is it's doable and i think we we you know just redoubling efforts to really understand how did that work and what comes to mind for me is the roots of success uh you recall that that document where there was an analysis of what uh in vermont what schools were doing uh, mm -hmm. doing that and what were the characteristics I think that's a that's a great place to 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 start, and one of the pieces in there is um, the social emotional climate piece. And unfortunately, going forward, it's everything is going to be so different. Um, we're really going to have to start from scratch, <laughs> as far as measuring, as far as you know, understanding. But great, thank you. Other questions? And the scroll through and see if anyone's raising their hand. <laughs> I, I just have a question on what is it, what is the expectation that we are going to do uh, as far as this goes? I mean, it's great to have it presented and have an understanding of it, but what is the expectation that our role is for this? As I understand it, your role is to hold our feet to the fire on at least an annual basis. So this time next year, uh, if we come back with the same plan, the question is, so what'd you do this year? What happened? What results did you get? Um, I think that's, that's the role that is envisioned for the board. And it's certainly, um, you know, a similar question for individual board members on leadership councils. Um, you know, how is this working for, for our, our particular school? Um, that's, th that's my take on it. Okay, thank you. And I guess, Kelly, I would add to that. My thought is, I'm not sure it should be a once a year thing. I kind of want to poke and prod maybe a few times during the year, um, just to see. And if they have nothing to report, they have nothing to report, that's fine. But I guess, it seems like a year is a long time. <laughs> yeah, and so I guess if I can ask just one more question, that is, um, kind of uh, a response to David and kind of a question, follow-up question. So David is uh, indicating what he 
if I understand it correctly. His observation is that we are not making progress or not making enough progress or, you know, that sort of thing. And um, is that, do you, uh, Paul, do you uh, agree with that? Do you, um, is that what your assessment would be? H how do you feel about, um, um, about that? Sure. I, I feel like um, I've kind of got uh, two parallel visions. Um, I see the work that we do in this district and I um, see through connections in regional and, and statewide organizations, see what's happening in other districts. I look at the data and in that, through that lens, we do a great job. We are, this is a, this is a, a high functioning system. Um, I look at it, if I look at it, it, it's the same data, but in terms of, so what's missing? What are we not doing? Um, yeah, the, 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 the issue of that performance gap is to me the, the, the most, you know, the, the red flag. We, it, and, and as I said to David, it's, we've managed to, to, to get a good crack at it. We've managed to get pretty close. Um, in fact, there is a, uh, there's a school in, dis in the district right now that on large scale, uh, on the school-wide basis, um, large scale assessment performance, the low SES group performed better than the non-low SES group. So we, we, we hit it from time to time, but what we want is, is consistency across the board. So how about we all read it on our own? If we've got questions, can we send them to you, Paul? And oh, sure. Okay. So if anybody, you know, read this over, if you've got questions. Um, I'm seeing Andy up at the top. Andy, I'm assuming you've been kind of brought in on this so you know what you're about to inherit. <laughs> I have a copy of the, the district, the SU, and all the school CIPs, so. Okay. So that is good. All yes, right. Yes, Paul has been great to share everything. Super. Let me turn that off. Um, so I, I, I have one, we, oh, go ahead, Sean. I have one more, I have one more comment if I could. Um, what I've noticed since the WSESD has been formed is my familiarity with a, a lot of administrators throughout the district. Uh, so elementary school principals, um, I knew the high school and the middle school and the career center a little bit better previously. But it, it seems to me that what you've just laid out, they, they use the vocabulary. They seem to have a, a pretty unified vision. And this would be, I see it every time we get together. So. I sort of think that the the plan does have a real measurable uh, communication language that's being used. So it, it's kind of nice to see. I can I can just you know I can just think about times that I've spent in meetings with with principals um, and just think yeah they're they're it's starting to be a common language. Yeah. for the whole district wide and and I really appreciate that so um okay so why don't we all take time to look it over if we've got questions send them to Paul and then we can put this on our next agenda um <laughs> which hopefully will not be for a few weeks <laughs> <laughs> um and we can approve it then does that sound good to everybody all right. Um, thank you, Paul. We appreciate this. My pleasure. Um, all right. So I think we have no other business other than a few executive sessions. Um, so I think at this point, we will one, once we go into executive session, I'll stop recording. I'm not sure if, I think we might have action to take, so I'm gonna put Rich in the waiting room. <laughs> um, and I think, so I think I am looking for a motion to go into executive session. I'm assuming this is one, 
VSA 313 1A on contracts. Um, would someone like to make that motion? And I'd like to invite in Lyle and, I guess Lyle and Andy should come in. So moved. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All right, I think that was Anne. All right, so we are in executive session at 4.04. Rich, I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to put you into the waiting room. All right, I have got Rich in the waiting room. So let's see. Oh, we got Sean still. Sean, do you wanna hang out? Sure, I would. All um, right, can we- If can it's we... permissible. I, I, I won't, don't wanna do anything that's not, oops, I forgot to mute. Everyone I don't wanna do anything that's not permissible, but if, if it's fine, I'll stay. Okay, why, why don't you stay? So Sean, we're going to friendly amendment that our executive session includes Sean. All right, so then we've got David, Sean, Ann, Lyle, Andy, Kelly, and Michelle. Okay, so this is looking good. And now I have to remember how to pause the recording. Zoom recording. Admit Rich. See, Rich is joining. All right, well, at least we're recording, so that's gonna help. Um, okay, so again, we're out of executive session at 4.11 with no action taken during the session. Um, would someone like to make a motion? I move that this board authorize the expenditure of up to $3,000 to allow our new superintendent to attend the Vermont Superintendent's Academy. Is there a second? Second. Um, hold on, I forgot there's one other thing I have to do for Rich. Oh no, I guess I don't have to. Yay, okay, it did hold. <laughs> okay, we're good. Um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? All right, hearing none, go for it. <laughs> Good. Um, okay, um, I would like to move that we go into executive session on a contract matter um, and invite in Andy, Lyle, and Sean, you wanna come back on this one? Sure. Okay. Um, is there a second to my motion? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. Rich, we're going to bounce you back into the waiting room. See you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to stop recording. Let's see. Rich is in the waiting room. Okay. We are pausing the recording. Okay, no. okay, we are out of executive session at 425 with no action taken. David, do you want to make a motion? Um. Yeah, I move that the board authorize me to um, uh, contact a Richards, uh, invite the Richards group to develop a proposal for, um, to gather the information necessary to develop a proposal uh, for managing our, our health insurance. Is there a second? Clumsy, clumsy. <laughs> You're the clerk, you can clean it up a little if you like. <laughs> well, that's dangerous. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Anne. All right, any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. 
Um, I would now entertain, let's see, I move we go into executive session and invite in Sean, Andy, and Lyle on our regular contract matter. All those, is there a second? A second. All right, Michelle seconds. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed or objections? All right, <laughs> hearing none, I'm going to kick Rich back into the waiting room. I wish I could do this with my family. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody said that, uh, somebody in the legislature said it's going to be really difficult when we don't have mute buttons anymore. <laughs> 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 right. Everybody laughs, which is good. <laughs> 427, we are in executive session. Okay, we have risen from executive session with no action taken at 449. Um, we will now go, Lyle, do you anticipate action? Possibly. Okay. So Rich, we're going to bounce you back into the waiting room. <laughs> I will move that we go into executive session on a contract matter. Is there a second? Second. Michelle has seconded. So we are going into executive session at 4.50. And we are recording, so we are out of executive session at 501 with no action taken. Would someone like to make a motion? Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, wait, are we going to make a motion on what we just discussed? Or are we just going to yes. adjourn? No, we're, okay. oh, no, no, we need the motion on what we just discussed. Okay, somebody else who wrote down notes, Dave, maybe you'd like to make it. <laughs> no, I didn't write it down, but I, I think I can articulate it. Um, uh, I move that we approve the uh, administrative recommendation, recommendation as presented. All right, is there a second? Second. Michelle, second. Any questions? Seeing none, all those, oh, Ann, did you have a question? No. Nope, oh, okay. Um, all those in favor of the motion as read, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Seeing none. All right, so I think at this point, Anne, you're on. You can call me Ruth if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to fill nice. Andy in on Ruth Barton. Maybe that's someone he needs to meet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Madam Chair, there being no further business before this board, I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Hey, Have a great weekend, everyone. Can I bug you for a second, Rich? <laughs>